Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much, have a great day. Hello, this is Mike at Trade Wounds RV Center. Here to congratulate you on your purchase of your J-Flight 267 BHS bunkhouse travel trailer. Here to walk you around the unit, show you how to use a few things, get the best use out of your camping season. Let's start by taking note to a few things. Do you have a slide on your off-camp side? And know where your water and electric hookup are. Your water will be on your driver's side or your off-camp side towards the rear of the unit. And your power cord stores inside the middle of the back of the unit. So park accordingly. Leave room for the slide to open. And park close enough to your water and electric hookup so you can utilize the facilities easier. Now let's talk about arriving at the campsite. Our hitch guy is going to show you how to unhook your hitch. If your hitch is unhooked, you're going to want to level your unit. Now your unit does come with a power stabilizing jack with a night light should you be docking at night. Simply press down to go down, press up to go up. Now I recommend putting a level inside your door or you can get a little stick on level for the side of your unit, place it about the middle, have someone watch that while you're raising and lowering it, get the unit exactly level. Now should you not have power, at the top here, underneath this little rubber stopper, fits this hand crank. For some reason you don't have power, you can raise and lower your unit by using this hand crank. Speaking of power, another thing I like to do when arriving at the campsite is check my battery posts. These can wiggle loose going down the road, so check your posts, make sure they're connected well. Now that you've got our unit level, we're going to stabilize the unit. Now these are stabilizing jacks, not leveling jacks. That's very important because you don't want to level your unit with these. They're made just to hold your unit in place and stabilize it. Crank to the right to bring them down. We're going to bring these down to the ground. I highly recommend jack pads. Jack pads are going to protect the feet of your stabilizing unit from dirt, debris, hot tire, or pavement that may be getting sticky in the uh, middle of the summer. So pick up four stabilizing jacks, turn your stabilizing jacks down. Now once you've brought all four down, go back around and make sure you haven't brought any more up. Um, you just want to bring these down taut. So they're nice and tight with the ground to stabilize the unit. After you brought down all four of those, we have stabilized our unit, we have leveled our unit. Now we're gonna hook up our water and electricity. Again, your electricity is all the way at the back of the unit. We'll start with that. Your power cord stores inside the unit. You have a 30 amp cord here. At the end of that 30 amp cord, should you need to hook up to 110, use this amperage reducer that comes in your convenience pack. Bring it down to 110. Just remember at 110 you're only going to run one AC unit. Uh, this one only has one. Once we've got our power hooked up, we're going to hook up our water. Let's start by just to the right. Behind this access panel is your hot water heater. First thing you're going to do is plug your hot water heater. You may have left this out from last time you were camping, draining your hot water heater, so put in your plug. Once this plug is in, 
we can come around and hook up our water. You take your hose and you're going to hook it up to this water pressure regulator. Now this is going to reduce the pressure of the water to 40 to 50 PSI. It's going to protect your lines inside your unit. You don't know what the water pressure set at at different parks. So always use this when putting any type of water into your unit. Hook up your water pressure regulator. Turn on your city water. If your city water has been on for a while, you're going to come over here and you're going to pull this pressure release valve. That's going to let air out and then water. Once the water is flowing steadily through here, you know that your water tank is full and you can light it from indoors. Now should you go dry, dry camping or somewhere they don't have city water connect, again, make sure your hot water heater is plugged, your drain plug is in. Come around to your campsite, just to the left of your doorway is your potable water tank. Non-pressurized water tank, you're going to open this up and you're going to fill that. Once that tank is full, you're going to do the same thing by burping the hot water heater by pulling on the pressure release valve and letting air out and then water. Once that's full of water, you know that your tanks are full and you can let your hot water heater when using potable water. When using potable water, you'll turn on your tank pump. That's the only time you turn on your tank pump, you don't need it for city water. So we've got our water hooked up, our electricity hooked up. I'm going to walk you around the unit and show you a few things before going inside and deploying our slides. You have your spare tire back here with the cover. This unit is prepped with a Furion backup camera. Should you decide to purchase one in our store, just a device that sits on the dash of your vehicle, tow vehicle, and electronically communicates with the unit. You do have your ladder here for accessing the roof. Check out your seams on your roof. Completely walkable roof. Cable TV and satellite hookup. We're on our off camp side now. Your black and gray holding tanks are here, as well as a low point drain. Right here. Your city water connect. Your black tank flush, which we'll talk about when dumping our tanks. You have an outdoor shower. Coming to the front of your unit, you do have your pass-through storage, which is accessible from under your bed, huge storage area. Coming around here to the front, let's talk about your propane tanks. Under your cover will be your propane tanks. These do have a regulator on them. Simply point towards the tank you wish to use. Your battery box. Coming around to your campsite big pass-through storage again. Do you have your huge awning with LED lights? I'll run that out for you in a moment. Again, your potable water. This is a TV mount. There's a bracket that'll snap right on there. Plug it in there. Hook up your cable TV satellite and watch TV from outdoors. This is a hood vent for your microwave and your outdoor kitchen. Let's talk about how to hook this up. You have this hose that comes with it. Underneath, simply plug this part in here. The other end goes to your quick connect LP here. And then you will hand light this. Simply turn to high to light and hand light it. Stores in neatly. All right, about covers everything out here. All this uh, silver thing here is your furnace heat vent release. That'll get hot, so you're clear of it. Let's take a look on the inside of your unit. Coming inside your unit. To the left of your door is your fire extinguisher. Your fire extinguisher will always be located at your entryway door. And to the left here is some control panels. First we're going to talk about your awning. 
I'm going to run your awning out. So I want you to see how far to run this out. Actually, there's your slide control. We'll run your slide out in a moment. This power awning is really nice. So you're going to run that out until that white flap falls down to 90 degrees. That's as far as you want to come out. And then you can run it in. So above that, I'll run that in. Are your interior and accent lights. To the left of that, here's your water pump that you turn on when using potable water. Two places to turn on your water heater, depending on if you're using gas. Turn it on here. If you're hooked up to electricity, turn it on here. This is to check your levels full battery and your tanks. Blow that your slide. And one thing I want you to make sure you do is make sure everything's clear of it. And hit out. Your slide's gonna go out. And you're gonna hear a noise here at the end. That is perfectly fine. Does not hurt the slide, does not hurt the mechanisms. What it's going to do is set the slide. That low grinding noise. It's okay to hold for two or three seconds. And our slide is out. Down at the bottom here on your left, as you come in the doorway, is your 12 volt carbon oxide detector. The reason that I mentioned 12 volt is because this is constantly running off your battery. So if you're going to be gone for the day, disconnect your battery if you're not hooked up to power or this will run your battery down to nothing. After your battery is dead, your carbon monoxide detector won't work because it will be drawn off something that will burn it out. Coming around your unit here, one touch LED lighting all throughout the unit should you just want to dim them all and leave one up over the restroom. Self-explanatory microwave. You do have a light and fan above your cooktop. This glass cooktop makes an excellent backsplash. Down here you turn this to light, hit your spark, and when your gas is on that light. Below that is your oven. Below your oven is an access panel to your breaker box and fuses. Now it looks like you have mostly 15s, couple 40s in there. I highly recommend getting a handful of those from our store and having them with you when you go camping. Let's talk about your Nordico fridge. Touch to turn it on here. And your different settings. This is a furnace vent. In the rear of your slide here, you have your thermostat. Fan high, air high, heat high. I'm going to turn on the air for a minute because it's a little warm in here. Coming to the back here, I will note, in your bathroom, you do have a 110 with GFI. One touch light in the bathroom as well. In the bathroom you have a hand crank. Right to raise. Over in the corner you have a little button to turn it on. Turn that down. Make sure it's down for travel. Also take note, behind your toilet you do have a little bit of plumbing to keep an eye on. Just like your home, you want to maintain it. And just keep, make sure everything's tight. They are bouncing a house down the road and things get loose. Coming to the front of your trailer here. Did you know that this jackknife's down into a bed? Simply lift the front and you're down. Lift the front and pull on the back and you're back to a sofa. Up here you also have your IRV technology sound system. Bluetooth, 
AM FM disc dual zone you can play your music indoors outdoors or both this is all prepped for television coming into your bedroom And some accent lights here. Your one touch lighting above the bed. Next to that, you do have 110. Shelves on this side. Over on the opposite side. It is prepped for a television. Should you put a television on that mount, that mount will quickly snap off and attach to the mount that I showed you outdoors. As you prep for your TV. Well, it covers everything on the inside. Let's go on the outside and act like we're leaving the campsite. Before going out, I wanted to come back to your fridge. So, this is strictly electric fridge. So, you'll hold that button for about five seconds. That comes on. You'll raise or lower temperature here. This is your freezer. This is your fridge. Set the levels according to you, which one you want. Three, four, five seconds, and that's off. All right, now let's go dump our tanks. So we've closed our slide up. Go to the front of the park. Again, take note that it's on your off camp side at the rear. We're gonna hook up our sewage hose. And we're going to pull our black tank. Now after we pull our black tank, it feels like this is dumped for a while. Back in focus here. We're going to come up here, hook up our city water connect, excuse me, our water pressure regulator to our tank flush. What we're going to do is we're going to leave our black tank open. We're going to hook up a hose to this black tank flush and run that for about five minutes. What that's going to do is going to wash out your black tank, get all that nastiness out of there. After a good five minutes, make sure you do it. Don't be in a hurry. You're washing out that black tank. You want it to be nice and clean. Go ahead and unhook your water. Come down here. Close your black tank. Pull your gray tank. Now also, while you're there, you can go ahead and do your low point drains. Drain your hot and cold water here. It's clean water, it's just gonna be dumping onto the ground. After your gray has been dumped, which is gonna wash out your hose better, simply take your sewage hose and store it inside your bumper. Nice, clean, convenient place to store it. All right, again, we'd like to thank you for choosing Tradewinds. Thank you for the purchase of this beautiful J Flight. Hope you guys enjoy it for many years to come. Happy camping.